Well, hello and welcome to Producer Dan. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Today we are talking about markers and memory locations in Pro Tools. Now, they recently did an enhancement to this feature. It's one of my most favorite features in Pro Tools. Um, in version 2023.6, they enhanced the markers and memory locations feature. So we're gonna go over everything. If you're not familiar with markers, uh, they're awesome. Uh, they are so useful for navigating through your musical projects. So here we are in Pro Tools. And you can see I've made markers for this song across the top of the markers ruler. And you can see I've made one for the intro, for verse one, verse two, chorus. And like I said, you can navigate through the song. Here we are at intro. Let's say I want to go to the chorus one, chorus two, chorus three. So it makes it really easy to do that. And if that's all it did, that would be fine. Now, you can use color, obviously. You can have Pro Tools choose the color or you can choose your own uh, colors. Uh, for this example, I have um, made all my verses the same color. Verse one, verse two, verse three, verse four. All uh, my choruses are orange. And you can see them lined up in the memory locations window. And they've enhanced this as well. Here's the name of all the markers that I've done. Uh, here is the location of the marker. Now to make a marker, it's very simple. You just put your cursor where you'd like it to be. Uh, and it brings the insertion point to where you'd like that marker to go. You choose the target. For example, this little red mark is the target marker and I, I want to target this uh, marker lane. And so I press the plus button or you could put command enter on your numeric keyboard, uh, not on your regular keyboard, but on your numeric keyboard. And it brings up the new memory locations window. And so this one I'll just call start because it's at the start of the song and perhaps this might be where I want to start the bounce. So you can choose either a marker or a selection or none and I'll go over that in a second. This is showing where it's going to go. It's going in the the markers ruler and you can choose your color. I'm going to choose uh, black. Let's just, just choose black because I've used up all the other colors and general properties. We'll go over that in a second. I'm going to unclick these and in the comments I'll just write start bounce and then enter. And then there you are. There's the new black marker. Uh, I'm going to open that up so you can see. Right now the comment is shown because see this little blue marker this is the prioritize marker name versus comment so right now it's the comment that's showing if i unclick that it'll just show the name of the the marker and over in the window you can see number 19 is now the start marker and here's the comment so it's very simple and probably most of you know how to do that already. <laughs> so I'm going to delete that one because I don't really need it. Now, marker lanes. Uh, they've added four more of these. There is the one that we're looking at now, but they've added four more. So you can have up to five on the top of your screen at any time. So you can use these. Uh, for different things and I imagine this would be useful if you did video or cinematic work and you needed different cues uh, different markers for different cues like sound effects dialogue musical cues those can all be assigned to different marker lanes now I don't know if I would use all of these uh, for what I do but just know that they're there if you need them for your production work 
Now, I mentioned uh, the colors and in, in that I have assigned all my verses and choruses all one color, and that's just in case you wanted to sort these. You can sort your memory locations in this window. For example, you can put them all in the order that they are in your timeline, uh, or you can put them in numerical order, which might not make any sense because they're numbered as you make them. So these numbers, as you can see, do not line up uh, to the timeline. You can put them in the order of the different types of markers that they are. For example, these markers are in the markers ruler, and that's why they have a little ruler next to them. That's this section here. Or you can see that these two markers down at the bottom have a different little picture next to them, a different logo. These are track markers. You can add markers to the tracks in different places in the song. And here I have two. Uh, for example, uh, this one is an EQ setting on the woodblock track. Here's my woodblock track. Here's the marker. And I've labeled it EQ setting. And you can see here in the window, there's a room for comments. So you can put comments now with any of your markers. Um, so the reason you'd want to have markers along the track is if you've made mental notes about uh, things that you've done in the mix that you want uh, either someone else to know about or you want to remind yourself. Like, for example, I'm unsure of the EQ setting for this wood block in the intro of this song. So I've made a note, and in the comment I've written, not sure about setting high pass filter question mark. So that would be helpful if I was sharing this with someone else, or I've just done kind of a song run through and made notes of things I want to do in the mix. Another example is uh, an EQ move that I've done on the piano. I've automated an EQ move as the song gets more dense. I'm wiping out or kind of doing a high pass filter on that piano. So I made a mental note there. And here's something else you can do if you have your uh, comments showing. If you hit Shift U, you can toggle back and forth uh, and have your comments either showing or not showing. Then again, that's Shift U, and that's either Mac or Windows. It's the same. All right, something else you can do with your track markers is connect them to a specific clip. Uh, for example, I want this marker to follow this clip around if this should happen to move. I'll just uh, highlight the clip and then I'll press Control and then click. And now they're connected. If I move that, that will move uh, along with it. So that's helpful. All right, so a couple more very good uh, additions they've done here in the memory locations window I want to cover with you. Um, let's make another memory location uh, marker. So I'm going to uh, put the cursor here and then command enter. It brings up the new memory location. And we've already made a marker. Let's go over the selection and also the none. Uh, first of all, if we make a selection marker, it will be placed in the timeline across the top here. And it will recall any of these uh, properties uh, that you want to recall. Let's say you're editing something and you want uh, the windows to come, come back uh, to a certain, uh, a certain way, like you've got your editing set up, the track heights are a certain way, and you've got certain groups. Uh, that you want to come back up and be visible. So, for example, we'll, let's do zoom setting and uh, track heights uh, for this particular example, and I'm going to write test selection. And there it is in the memory locations window. So, uh, if we move along in our mix and we have kind of put the windows 
uh, in kind of a different Zoom setting, and we've kind of moved on to a different part of the song. And you want to go back to a certain uh, place where you were editing, and the windows looked a certain way. You can choose this. It'll bring you back to the timeline and bring everything back to the way it was. And the third example is uh, the marker called None, where there'll be no marker on the uh, edit window or in the timeline, but it'll be a place here in memory locations where you can recall your window configurations or your zoom uh, or your track heights. So let's make that third example. Command enter on my numeric keypad. I'll call this test WC for window configuration. And we'll call it none since it's the none uh, marker. And we will choose none. As you can see, everything has disappeared except for these general properties where you can recall the zoom settings, track heights, and I'm also going to have it uh, recall this window configuration that I called uh, test, which I had uh, configured uh, in advance. So we'll name this in the comments test WC for window configuration, and then it's the none marker. So there it is. It's entitled test WC none. And you can see that uh, we've had it recall the zoom and the window configuration, and also the track height as well. Again, let's kind of move our track heights and our zoom and go to a different part of the song. And let's say this is down and we're looking at this now. Let's say we want to go back to the way things looked prior. Let's say that's our kind of our favorite mix position. So you can just uh, go to your memory locations and choose the one that we just did. And uh, this is part of the window configuration that I did earlier. I had it come up uh, so my mix window or half of my mix window would come up on top of my edit window. And you can see that the track heights and the zoom uh, have been resumed. So that's helpful. All right, so that is markers and memory locations, the new enhancements and Pro Tools. I hope you found that as interesting and as useful as I do. They've made something that was already very useful and they've made it incredible. So thank you so much for checking out the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.